I'm like the cranky old man who just like stares out the window and glares at people. Hey guys, welcome back to Brandon Botanical. This week I'm gonna talk about five different plants that I think are totally underrated. I think these should be staples in everyone's collection. They are just such amazing plants. People don't go hype for them like they do like a pink princess or an elbow or anything like that. And this is all just from my experience. Of course, there's many other plants that I love and think are underrated, but these are the ones that I... And this is all just from my experience. Of course, everyone has different experiences, different tastes. First of all, golden pothos. I think that pothos are extremely underrated. I think they're a great beginner plant, a great advanced plant, parent plant. I just bought this one last week. Look at these leaves. How could I say no to that? I'm gonna repot this one and put it on a moss pole, so hopefully we can keep these big leaves going. The reason I think, oops, it's kinda, it's got a very small leaf coming in, so that's not good. The reason I think pothos are so underrated is because I don't think people treat them to their potential. They just kinda let them be. They don't necessarily let them climb all the time, so they don't get to be this huge, beautiful plant. So that is what I'm hoping to do with this bad boy. And every pothos is different, but if you can find one that has the right variegation for you, like, this is just stunning. These leaves are almost as big as my face. Love it. And 20 bucks at Ikea. Who can, who could say no to this? My next plant that I think is extremely underrated are marantas. People are very scared of them because they mix them up with calatheas. And although they are loosely related, they are not actually the same type of plant. And calathea do require a lot more care than a maranta. Maranta are pretty easy for the most part. The only issue I ever have with mine is that sometimes a couple of leaves will die off, but new leaves come right out from behind. So usually they don't have any super bad issues. They are pretty thirsty plants, so I find I have to water mine quite a bit. And this one, I couldn't pass up. Look at this leaf. It's humongous. I've never seen leaves like this. So I'm very excited about this guy. I really love the classic rabbit's foot, the lemon lime, and the red vein are also really great options too. And the variegated ones look really cool. I don't have one of those, but if any of you want to trade for one, or just give me it, <laughs> I would uh, appreciate that as well. I found are pretty tolerant of most conditions as long as it gets a decent amount of light and you water it when it starts to dry out, it's happy. Oh, my back hurts. Next on my list for the number third most underrated plant is the Jewel Orchid, this kind of brownish green, reddish veined version one. Everyone really likes the lime green electric lightning looking one, of course, but I think this one's just really unique. You don't see many plants that have this kind of coloring and the way the glitter forms in the veins is just super pretty. They're really forgiving. You don't even have to give them that much light, which is really awesome. I actually think I might be giving mine too much light. Now that I'm looking at the new growth, it's a little, it's coming in a little bit sun stressed looking. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, just watching the neighborhood teens patrol. I was like, why aren't they in school? It's summer. I'm like the cranky old man who just like stares out the window and glares at people. But anyway, I think the jewel orchid is really cool, and when it does flower, it has these really pretty little white flowers. Um, not super spectacular, but really cute nonetheless. Wait, did I say that was number four or number three? That was number three. This is number four. The Alocasia Bambino. It is my favorite alocasia. What I really like about it is a couple of things. It is a really vivacious grower, so it's always putting out new leaves and it can support more leaves than your typical alocasia. So each of these have, six, this has seven leaves, this one has four. So there's two in this pot. And they're just way cuter in my opinion than like a poly. The polys are just so huge and so like in your face. These are like a little bit more subtle. They have really pretty colors. It's kind of like a bluish green. The backside has really cool veining as well and they're nice and dark back there. Obviously, I need to uh, rotate this bad boy. Wow. <laughs> but yeah, I like it because it, they seem to be super easy to take care of compared to a lot of different alocasias. Oh, fungus gnat. <laughs> See, that got everywhere. Gross. Anyway, super easy to take care of. They grow a ton, and I just love them. They're so cute. And my number one most underrated plant is staghorn ferns. They are one of my favorite plants. They are so freaking cool. I just don't get why people are so afraid of them. Like, 
they're so easy. Just give them a lot of light and you can really water them whenever you want because they don't really tend to get root rot that often because they're epiphytes. So they, they like it to dry out, but if you overwater it, it's not going to cause that big of a deal. The root system isn't really that intense. So mine, I just keep in a mix of sphagnum moss with a little bit of potting mix and perlite and orchid bark. So I do like some nutrients in their soil. I think they're super easy. This was actually like a $4 rehab and it has grown so much over the last year. It has a beautiful new shield frond, which um, I think is really unique. The one downside is if they do get mealybugs as a pest, it is hard to treat them because they have this powder already on them that's like a protective coating for them. That is the one downside, but other than that, I think they're super easy, super unique, and I would love to mount mine. I just can't find a piece of wood that really just speaks to me. I really haven't done that much looking, though. And wood is so expensive now. Thanks, home builders. But yes, definitely get yourself a staghorn, a bambino, a golden pothos, maranta, and the poop brown jewel orchid. They are such rewarding plants, and they, they, they seem basic, and people don't really want them, but... I think they all deserve love. Oh, my arms are getting sore. Okay. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to hear more of me, check out my other videos. You can also check out my podcast with Nicole Larson, Where Are We Growing? Um, it's on all podcast platforms. You can find me on Instagram and TikTok, uh, BR underscore Anaconda. You can shop my website. It's monsteraplant.co. Um, we've got lots of plants, art, jewelry, tons of cool stuff on there. But yeah, definitely comment below um, what your most underrated plants are and let me know if there's anything else you guys want to hear. You guys have a great day. Definitely like and subscribe and I'll catch up with you guys later.